Hi, my name is Robert Unger. I'm the director of worship and music at Resurrection Lutheran Church in Cary, North Carolina. I'd like today to, to visit with you about the hymn, How Great Thou Art. How Great Thou Art goes back to a poem by Carl Gustav Weber was born in 1859 in Sweden. He would eventually become a pastor and an editor and a member of the Swedish parliament. His father was a shipyard carpenter. It was natural that young Carl would become a sailor, which he was for several years. Then he attended a technical craft school and subsequently taught skilled crafts. He had a, felt a call to preach and served as a lay preacher for a, a couple of years. There's very little written about his personal pastoral ministry, but it is believed that he was a pastor in his hometown. Most sources say that he wrote his poem Almighty God, which is the title he gave to it, when he was around 26 years old. He had been a walk on a lovely summer evening. A thunderstorm came up suddenly, and the wind blew fiercely. After the storm, he looked over the bay, which was suddenly as clear as glass. He heard the call of a thrush and then the evening church bell. He was overwhelmed with God's majesty, his power and his creation, and the gift of salvation in Christ. He went home and wrote the poem, Almighty God. It was first published in 1886. Several years later, he heard it sung for the first time, sent to a Swedish folk tune. An Estonian was impressed with the hymn and translated into German. The hymn was brought to North America by members of the Swedish Evangelical Mission Covenant Church of America. I'd like to read to you a personal devotional written by George Beverly Shea made this song popular as part of the Billy Graham Crusades in the 1900s. During the London Crusade, he says, my friend handed me a little four-page leaflet containing a new hymn. We received many contributions of this kind, and at first I did not examine it closely, but I did notice that it had words both in English and Russian and that it had a very strong, worshipful title, How Great Thou Art. A few weeks later, I learned that this new hymn by S.K. Hine was the result of almost 70 years of literary activity involving several different writers and translators. An earlier translation into English had been published in 1925 under the title, Almighty God, but it never really caught on. The German version, Wie groß bist du, had been translated from the original Swedish by Manfred von Glenn, a resident of Estonia. Five years later, Ivan S. Prochanov, who is known as the Martin Luther of the modern Russia, published the hymn in St. Petersburg in his own language. Several of Prokhanov's hymn booklets were combined into a large volume called The Songs of a Christian. It was published in Russian in New York City by Prokhanov's Friends of the American Bible Study, American Bible Society. This new release of Russian evangelical hymns brought How Great Thou Art to the attention of an English missionary couple 
Mr. and Mrs. Stuart K. Hine. And it was widely used by them in evangelism in Western Ukraine. After singing it for many years in Russia, Mr. Hine translated three verses into English. When the Second World War broke out, the Hines returned home to Britain, and they added the four stanza there. The completed song was printed in a Russian gospel magazine by Mr. Hine. Reprints were requested by missionaries all over the world, and it was one of those leaflets that was given to the Billy Graham Cassere in 1950. was first sang as part of the Billy Graham Crusade in Toronto in 1955. Cliff Barrows and his large volunteer choir assisted on the dramatic refrains. Soon after, it became used in the Hour of Decision and in the American Cru Crusades. In New York meetings of 1957, the choir joined George Beverly Shea in singing it 99 times. Reading the first verse of the Song of Worship, we think of the opening words of Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Carl Bebert once said that the inspiration for his original hymn was the beauty of Swedish meadows and lakes after a summer thunderstorm. Stuart Hine also wrote that the first verse of his English version came to life after a memorable thunderstorm in the Carpathian mountain range in Czechoslovakia. He had to seek shelter there for a night. On a later occasion, he visited the mountain country of Bukovnia in Romania. And in the grandeur of the woods and the forest glades, he heard a group of young Christians burst instinctively into song, accompanied by their mandolins and guitars. God talks to us through his creation. The heavens and the earth declare his glory. But the greatness of God is shown even more completely in the salvation he has planned and provided for us. What wisdom it reveals. What love it discloses. As the third stanza of this song confesses, the greatness is more than I can understand. I scarce can take it in. Mr. Hine also says that his final verse was written just after the Second World War, when many refugees from Eastern Europe were streaming into England. Although they had found greater safety and freedom in this new land, their incessant question was, when are we going home? It's the only when we reach our heavenly home that we will fully comprehend the greatness of God. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, now we only see a puzzling reflection in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. My knowledge is now only partial, then it will be whole like God's knowledge of me. In that day, we will bow in humble adoration and say, my God, how great thou art.
and humble. 